Which one's got added though? Welcome to the precursor for my situational book, awareness. DFAR is for dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Today I'm here with uh, Andrew Lanning and Gordon Bruce, and uh, we're all going to work on this book together. <laughs> DFAR is Defense Federal Acquisition uh, Regulations. Plural, not system. That's the what the S, S is. is. That's what the S is, and that's DFARS. We're going to talk about uh, why it means something to you if you're a contractor working with the DOD, federal government, and especially if you're in the defense industrial base. Welcome, guys. What's up, brother? Welcome. I didn't know you were live. This I was just like over here yakking away. away. I didn't chatting. know we were on. I didn't know we were on. Just <laughs> he's, he's actually <laughs> introducing the episode. I'm and looking, here over here working. At, we're looking at the book and just yeah, We're trying to figure out what we're supposed to say. Are we, supposed to, are we the dummies of today? Is that the idea? Because one of us should know something. Ain't that difficult for me, I can tell you right now. So. Uh, Thanks so, for having us. Hey, it's great having you guys around. Uh, this is like hibachi talk all over again. Yeah. For those of us in the cheap seats now, uh, that was the original show, Gordon's show. And yes. I'm actually starting to miss a Angus. Angus McTech. <laughs> we got <laughs> Angus could have been the dummy today. That's I could have brought him. Because he like, is a dummy. Yeah, I'm for turning him. Episode. His new character is an angry Scotsman, so now he comes on and he's not happy. <laughs> he's just angry at everything. <laughs> everything. He could have been angry about yesterday's false alarm. Did you hear uh, that one? Yeah, yeah. I got the call. The sirens went off on the east side, but not the, no, the they south were not, side. Yeah, I heard them. Yeah. I was uh, I was in Honolulu, no no signs, yeah, no uh, sirens. Yeah, I mean I'm walking down a set of stairs and people go, well you're you're gonna know what this is all about, and I went, mm -hmm. I'm looking at my phone right now and there's nothing on. No, it. <laughs> I think they're terrified of sending out a message after the missile attack warning, yeah. you know, and uh, I don't think EK ever got his password back. So. Well, I, put, I, I put a new post on Facebook. If anyone wants to go check it out, I'm oh. probably going to get beat up over that one. Really? You guys. <laughs> so, so it's another mistake. Just another uh, for those of you, you listening guys. out in Hawaii, not in Hawaii, we, we have a tendency to have a lot of false alarms out here. And uh, we got another one yesterday. The uh, tsunami warning sirens went off, which is also our nuclear missile attack alert. Which leads us to this new domain, situational, situational awareness. Situational awareness, right? That is one of the what new What a segue. Well, I just gave it to you. Well, we got to do some backup. Okay. Let's, let's, go, go, let's go back and, and talk oh, about the DFARS. Not again. Uh, you know, brief history uh, way back when when the okay. contracting wasn't balanced for everybody. Yep. And there was some shenanigans going on. They came out with these standards. You have to comply with these standards to have a federal contract. Uh, later on, of course, we had the war and spies were really prevalent and we had the whole McCarthy era and so uh, we added security to that the anti-spying regulations and the security uh, regulations so that's all built into DFARS and then now we have this influx of huge amount of cyber everything from ransomware to phishing attacks and sure. uh, things like that and insider threats are a big one so it's built into the DFARS now and uh, the DOD uh, help create an organization called the National Institute of Standards and Technologies to come out with a list of control checks for your cybersecurity uh, governance to control your organization so you can be secure enough to do business with the federal government. And the one that's particular to doing business with the federal government, if your organization is not a federal organization, that's called NIST 800-171. It's a set of 110 control checks, or, and it's listed out into 14 families. And that was going okay. It was self-attested, right? Yep. And uh, someone got caught for self-attesting. A whistleblower came up and said, no, 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 they're not really. And they got sued. So I think that was the trigger to get organizations in the DOD to come up with a new plan of attack to get people to actually comply with these regulations. And the, the problem was, if you're a vendor to the DOD, you have a downstream effect. All these little vendors to you, and you're vending to the DOD, if any one of you is compromised in that supply chain, they can get into the castle and break down the front gates. So we, uh, we want that security to permeate all the way down the supply chain. Yes. And the plan now is that DOD is going to make a nonprofit organization responsible for training organizations to go out and certify vendors to the DOD at, uh, at a level of one to five for the new cybersecurity Maturity model certification, CMMC. Yes. Very right. good. So he's, now we've brought us all the way up to speed. Do you think he's done this before? <laughs> this. Wow. I actually do teach this. Uh, oh, yeah. For those of you out there in the cheap seats, I actually teach for the University of Hawaii Community Colleges. Uh, I teach at Capulani Community College. I teach network security and ethical hacking. I'm also the IT program director out there. And I own my own small business that deals with the DOD called Kapu Technology. So, yep, I cover all this. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and you guys contract with the federal government, and yeah. you have contracts out here, and you deal with this too, uh, GJB and Associates, Integrated Security Technologies. Yeah. Uh, both of you guys have been in business for many, many moons, and uh, I'm just a noob. So we cover the whole range of experiences in this, in this field. So okay. we can come at this from a lot of different perspectives of how this is going to affect us. Now, the timeline, and you're better at timelines than I am, the timeline of this starts about now. They met their September deadline of getting out a draft of the new CMMC guidelines. And we're going to see a book on that. And comments must be in by September 25th. Okay, so hopefully so we'll make that deadline. You've only, Which got, is like, you know, you've only got a few days to make your comments on that, that document. And that's the document, it's the foundation for the reviews. So that's, that's going to become, hopefully in January, is when they're going to start certifying companies to go out there and do these audits and certify other companies. That's a tight timeline. Well, I think we'll see an RFP for that. That issuance, unless they, they just sole source it to something. An RFP for the DOD org to the, be the train the trainer. Yeah, they, they want a nonprofit is what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, I think that. I so think that the, may just be a direct award or, you know, but um, I, I think it, it'll be funded, right? The money's, it's when the 15th, so the new fiscal year is beginning. It's funded. Oh, that's right. So that right. effort will happen. They then won't. we'll have to line up who's, who's going to go get trained to become an auditor. Yes. And, and that'll they, take they a They won't RFP it if they don't have that much time. So yeah. they're going to. They'll source, or, sole source it, and the reason I think they picked the nonprofit because that enables them to sole source it. They could do a Wozby, yeah. Women with Small Business. They sure. could use an 8A. Mm -hmm. They could use a Hawaiian. Some I sort mean, of a training academy. Yeah, so, like, some training be somebody academy. Some bread, so there'll right? be like, someone out there. They, they've, got, they've got options. And they'll probably pick somebody that they can just go, okay, boom, you've got it. You're in. You've got three months. And we've got 600,000 Fed estimates defense industrial-based companies in the supply chain that got to get certified. 600,000. No, 300,000. I thought it was 300. 300. It's okay. We doubled 300, it up. 300,000. So, <laughs> so, so if, you, if you spin that further, Now it's down to 150 because there's a bunch of 150 of them are scared to death. Scared they're to not going to go. Disney, yeah, not right. gonna go. Like, we're not going to do well, that the, business anymore. Yeah. So, so 300,000, nine months. There's, there's no math. way. There's no well, way. Well, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So come September. You Next know, year. Next September Next of 2020, September. Right. when we start to get RFPs issued that have the requirement that you must be certified to X level, one, two, three, four, five, uh, in order again, to the bid. The acronym RFP, Request for, for proposal. Proposals, sure. Right. And so, you know, you'll, in theory, once, when this is working, you'll have to have been certified already in order to offer a bid to that RFP, now, which is awesome. If I'm wrong, you, you, you can do an RFP, you can respond, and they can do an RFI, Request for Information, mm -hmm. right? And you've got a supply what level you are based oh, on I the think, contract Oh, you have to price supply that cert with the bid, So with your this offer. This is a go-no-go, -go, like we've been saying. Yeah. If you don't have this, you cannot bid on this contract. Well, it'll be, it'll be recorded already in the SAM, so we're all listed in SAM.gov. What's SAM? SAM, um, I should know, Acquisition Management <laughs> System. We're so used yeah. to acronyms, it's, we don't yeah, know the SAM, definition SAM's anymore. the Acquisition Management System, so companies like us are all listed in there by our CAGE code, which is, uh, I don't know what C-A-G-E stands, don't even ask me. <laughs> Ours is one F-O-P-O, -O. I mean, I know where our CAGE code is, but you can, that's how you go in and search a company and all of its uh, primary codes, NAICS, National uh, Industrial Certifications, so this Classification Standards. So this is Yeah, right? it'll, it'll, so it'll be in there. Mm. So, and that's, that'll, you know, that's how they'll know that you're a valid offer. But without that, yeah. you're not in the running. You no, got, well, you might be able to, be. Pro, I, what I think I see is like protesting, like people say, well, does it have to be a level four? It should be a level two. So they're still gonna have this clarification of what kind of material is it that the government is saying has a, such a risk level associated with the, the potential loss of this material that it has to be categorized in at one of those levels, one through five, right? Well, I so, think we're going to see in this book that, that we, you just gave me the link to, that's a yeah. free book. Uh, Neil, our friend is out there, is he's, he's outlined uh, the first two levels are really easy to attain. Sure. It's level three is the one where you actually start doing something meaningful. Yeah, and I think that's... Yeah. I equate level three to being like 800, 171. It's which, current state. Yeah, which you can do without, the problem is DFARS leads it. And DFARS has a couple clauses in it that we've talked about previously, right? About C and having G. your data on a yeah. hard drive and the people who are at the C, you know, cl cloud service provider administrators being cleared type people. Right. So I find it interesting that know. you said that you think level two is easy. Okay, and this is, I'll just say based on, forget DFARS, forget NIST 800-171, just hit, I have a company and I have a tech, I have technology within my company. And first of all, here's one simple one. 
Established policies. I can guarantee you there's a lot of companies <laughs> no in town way. that do not have policies. That's level two. No, established practices to implement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. No, no. Okay. Establish, Establish a, plan. a plan. So that's like no. your so, so, so I can tell you right now, there's a whole bunch of companies that don't even do government work that don't even have this. And that's, oh, that's yeah. maturity level two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, this, yeah. that's why I'm well, hoping. It's still easy. It's just people aren't doing it. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping this, will, I'm hoping that this will, will fix a lot. Because, you know, regardless of what industry you're in, right, the defense industrial base is, is a leader, right? For sure, right? This right. is This is the weaponry that we build to secure our, company, our country with, right? ICBMs and all that stuff. So, but hospitals are just as important. People die there if things aren't secured, right? Sure, the water devices, supply lines. Water supply. Right. Um, utilities, right? So sure. these things are, are, increment, are, are um, part and parcel to our way of life. Yeah, turn off the electricity, see what happens. Right, exactly. So we, we, we talked right. about that yesterday. Yeah. So um, anyway, so what I'm hoping is that this type of guidance will motivate all of these businesses that are, what, I don't care who you service. I don't care if you're servicing Neiman Marcus. You know, exactly. You know, if you're bringing in POS systems into Neiman Marcus, for example, what's, what's flashing? <laughs> I must have said something. They hunted me down. The, uh, you know, but like just for example, right? I would hope that those kind of companies will, will elevate their hygiene. Look at this, go, you know what? Let's shoot for level one this year, level two next year. Without any prompting from anyone, without any regulatory pressure, they'll start to come up. Because this is stuff, as you to make your a point, great that, point. this is stuff they now. should be doing so anyway. Here, so here's, a, here's a, another point to all of this is that, Get ready. This is the beginning of the future. This is not just defar. Well, this is we're getting warmed this up. This is this is getting warmed up. It's yeah. going to be required. It's going to yeah, be required whether is... you're now. You all, we know the banks, insurance companies, et cetera, that you know deal with the money and so on. They have certain rules that they have to mm -hmm. comply with. Guess what? These are going to get applied to those. They're going to get stronger and tougher. And I don't care if you're Target or <laughs> Walmart or, or whatever Walmart. you are, <laughs> Walmart, whatever you are, you're going to have to get to those levels as well. Yeah, yeah sure. No doubt about it. And, yeah. and so this is, that's how what people should look at this as. Now, it's nice because the government's now willing to pay for it. You know, so when that thing says yeah. level three required, I can justify the delta cost difference between being zero and level three. What is that cost per month for those Microsoft licenses, for example, or for the Azure instance, if I got to have it in FedRAMP versus having it in a normal environment? And that's known. So they'll now pay for that. So before they weren't. So that's why yeah, I think this, this self attestation stuff was difficult for people to bite off on because it's it's, a money it's, issue, it's six yeah. figures. I mean, it's not inexpensive yeah. um, to get there. So most small businesses aren't going to spend till they have to. Yeah. E resilience says it's going to be around a quarter of a million dollars, and, and I they're, they're that's about, inexpensive. Right. That's that's that's. I'm not sure that number is right because yeah. yeah, because in that number they said Fed ramp you know fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars no mm -hmm. is your is your Fed ramp fifty thousand yeah. dollars to set up to, to set up one time so yeah, to one set time up the yeah, instance. yeah one time yeah. so and you're a small client I got another yeah. client that's bigger than that oh yeah so uh, that was double that yeah I bet so they didn't, give, they didn't even give me the average so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, I um the, the Delta license difference was like eleven bucks a month per you know person to have a, a GCC high right which after what was GCC um uh, government Compute Cloud. Government Compute Cloud. Community Cloud, cloud sorry. So you can cloud. have GCC and then you can have GCC yeah, high. Right. You're going to need high to do the DFARS, blah, blah, blah. So that for us was a difference of like 49 and 60 or something per like E3 or but E5 or whatever they are. But you can add that to your contract now. Exactly. Yeah, so because it will be required. So Yeah, but, you, but I, they still haven't said how they're going to pay us. Well, what a, do, it's you're gonna just building it into your bid. Yeah, your <laughs> yes, but yeah, but they still said they said put, put it into your bid, but they still or into your price, but they still haven't said and this is how we'll pay you back for it. Right, that's the. They key. haven't worked out the details. Well, the, so so yeah, so again, like, you trust, let's, you, let's talk about those details right you trust the, break. the government. Uh, we blew through fifteen minutes. Like <laughs> what? That I know. Right. We'll be right back after these breaks. Until then, stay safe. Aloha, my name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanavan. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101 where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. 
been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to our first episode of DFARS for Dummies here in the Cyber Underground. Again, I'm Dave Stevens, and I'm here with Andrew Lanning and Gordon This Burst. is our third episode. Of DFARS for Dummies? Well, we haven't we done this a few times? We've done this, but we've never named it DFARS for Dummies. We came oh, up with it. Oh, I see. DFARS now it's for officially dummies. for the dummies. <laughs> That's why no, you guys got me in here. Believe it or not, there is actually a DFARS for Dummies book. Out there. Is there really? The yep. yellow one? Yep, there's a yellow one out <laughs> That's there. That's why one, they got one, me in one here. One contractor was contracted by the organizations for that, and they've got, but they don't quite call it DFARS for dummies. It's like defense contracting for dummies or something like that. Oh, no, we got to do DFARS for dummies. Yeah, uh, the saddest one I ever saw on the shelf was depression for dummies. Well, how if you're reading that book, it's already too late. Or how to deal with it. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> well, how, how to get depressed. Next month is, inside, is uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so we can talk about all that. We'll get, let's get, oh. talk about insider threat, Insider threat, is, that's we'll, a good one. Yeah, we'll yeah. take this on, we'll, we'll make this bigger. Let's put up our first image of today, the uh, cover page of the book. This is a free uh, book Thank you, Neil. CMMC by Neil McDonald. You should and tell We have everybody. a link that we could put up there. I sent that out there too, uh, but it's a really easy link. And if you look this up uh, in Google, you'll come up with that. CMMC Made Easy. By? By Neil McDonald. By Neil Who McDonald. is he? Oh. See, I'm loading this. I'm lo this is oh, so, fire away. No, no, you tell, you tell <laughs> no, you, I, don't, I don't really know much about well, him. I, 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 I think he works for the SBA. Who, uh, but the he's Small a Small Business Administration? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, and so his office, I think, helps promote um, promote uh, small business contracting efforts. You know what I'm saying? So this this comes up under that effort. Now, um, Neil's a great guy. So I've chatted with him on LinkedIn, but I haven't uh, had him on a show or anything. So maybe we can get him in here. I'm sure we he, should get sure him in here. Willing, this yeah. is a great book. I mean, oh. the book is very good. Well, let's put up the second yeah, image here. I call here. him authoritative on this stuff. He's the guy. Yeah. So here's how the CMMC breaks down on a high level. These are the levels one through five that you're going to have to get certified on. Correct. If your uh, contract states that you need CMMC level three, then you as the prime and all your subs downstream have to come up to that and level. And most Fed contracts will require a minimum three. If you're going yeah, to share, the, would, if you're going the, to share the information with them. So let's make sure we're clear. Because let's, so let's oh, say. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if they're not, if they're not <laughs> going to share the information, there's, if they're not going to touch the information that is declared CUI, then because perhaps like control, I'm working, if I'm doing electronics. Control and unclassified, unclassified yeah, information. And let's just say I'm going to decide to install a, a, a water cooler. And so <laughs> okay. I hire a plumber to do that. He's not going to touch the electronic stuff. Just, just so we're clear. Uh, but, but he has to get into your office. Yeah. To install the water cooler. Maybe. This is this is the debate. This is the a lot of the discussion, but it's the right. vagueness of it right now. Mm. And that's why the comment period up until September twenty fifth is right. there, because there's some areas you can't you can't make a determination. And I'll give you an example. I had I had a had a client or have a client had a client that um, the janitorial service, okay? Right. Right, right. Sure. Are they allowed into their office to pick up the trash and to vacuum unescorted? Oh, is there is there material be, out? Well, it's, it's, but the the question is so is there material? Out? It's not supposed to be. You're supposed to turn off your computer. You're supposed to close and lock, the lock everything yeah. that's there. Sure. So now there's the other question: Does the janitorial service have to be a U.S. citizen or national carrying a green card? Only for 853, 800, 171 does not specify that. Debatable. We're having discussions okay, with that right now. Right. So that's, that's, so, so now they're going, well, maybe if it goes to level four, they might have to be. But now you're in three, so now everybody's like trying to say, not everybody, but they're trying to say, well, maybe we better be secured to level four, then mm -hmm. we'll address level three by doing that. So it's, it's, it's getting to be a really interesting, especially if you've got an ISBOM room, or if you've got a, a secure room. Mm -hmm. Now, no one can get into that secure room unless they've got the right clearances for that. Right. Right? And it needs to be properly secured and all of those kinds of things. Well, so if there's a trash can in there, and there shouldn't be. Right. <laughs> no, you can. So, so we enter skiffs escorted. So that skiff so. is different than an ISBOM room, though. So I'm going to argue with you on that. Skiff Let's is, do acronyms real quick. Skiff, secured compartmental. Uh, information Facility, right? SCIF. I don't know in this box. I can't remember. This box is the National is Industrial it? Security Program Operating Manual. Ah, got it. So NISP is the guidance for everything that is confidential and above. Let me give you a, another example that's really gray but really simple from a company I used to work for. Okay. They did a really easy thing. They went on to base and they took the by laser measurement. They took the interior space measurements of buildings for janitorial contracts. 
cleaning, right? And the reason is because uh, the janitorial contracts would just go to the, uh, the contractors, go to the original plants and say, oh, this is 8,000 square feet interior, right? Sure. But that's not true. You got to take away the elevator space, the stairs, the thickness of the walls, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So they go in and measure all the interior spaces, and they make maps of the interior, right? Mm -hmm. The contracting officer said, no, that's not CUI. But you add that to a map of the base that's publicly available, and now it's the aggregate of those two things that becomes CUI. Yeah, see, that's the dilemma. Sure. That's a dilemma. So even if you don't think your downstream people will actually handle those CUI documents, even if they're not marked, the aggregate of other documents together downstream right. might constitute CUI, and you can get into some trouble there. Well, there's, there's, but there's guidance. So this guidance is in the NISP. That guidance is specifically written in the NISP, how, how you do that, how you aggregate that information, how you label it, and the no, guidance comes from the National Archives. Right. So if you want to know what CUI is and what the aggregation of information that could become CUI is, which is the responsibility of the, perhaps the person generating the information, right? So the guy above me, he's not. Let's say I got, let's say I got contract X with one contractor and contracts Y with another, and those two things for, th for those two contracts don't matter, right? So I'm, they're flowing down to me, this document and this document. But when they get together... And let's say those are level two. But when me, where they meet in my office, and now I've got these two documents together, yeah. and if you were, could come in and get your hands on them and remove them from my facility or something, that together there was a risk of them now being... CUI. Some, well, yeah. Let's say, or, these, let's say this was level two, this was level two, it's but sensitive. together it's a level five, right? Okay. So that would be you scary. Yeah. So that's... But you, have to, that, but you do have to... Um, um, uh, market. So there's there's a whole manual about how to mark that information, how to adj adjudicate that information, how to dispose of it. Like I'll handle. So material handling is a, a big well, piece. Well, that's another piece of it. But it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, it's all in the NISP. We are confidential and above. And so this is where I think the DFARS current DFARS 171 will start to expand itself, and we're going to have overlap between what we're calling CMMC level five and confidential and. There's going to be some ugly area there, or they'll just take treat all of it as confidential. Why are we calling it controlled unclass? Oh, yes. It's important. Well, it's they, important. because they've redefined it for, based on what it was called before. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so we created this model down here that's not it's confidential, great. but maybe it'd be better it just might, to call it confidential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Controlled unclassified, you've got, you got um, classified, you've got mm -hmm. secret, you've got top secret. And you know, below that, you've got and, and sensitive, you, and, 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 you've got and, and who determines FUO, which level, FUO. who is the one that determines that this is controlled, unclassified information? I can't go back and, it's not like I can pick up a book, and it, because it, it's, not, no, it's not, not real clear. Well, the National Archives says, like engineering drawings, it says clearly. So yeah, for what, me, it's, I know what those are for a mind. But then the engineers will argue, okay, well, what type of engineering? If I'm engineering a bolt, is that really... Is that really CUI? It's a bolt. Well, it could be. It if could I could, be. If I could get the weakness of that bolt going into an aircraft, I, yeah. I know the weakness of the aircraft. Right. So, so this, is the, this is the dilemma of it so all. I think a lot of the contractors, in, in my experience, uh, when the contractors go, they talk to their, their contracting officers. The contracting officers said, look, you have this DFARS in here. you got to handle your CUI properly. And the contractors ask, what is our CUI? And the contracting officer has no clue. No nope. well, so so the way it's written, the government is supposed to identify it for you. It's, it's vague. It's that, vague. So this is yeah. why they went. That's why they. This is why this went back and, and was not why, but they were they were waiting on RMF two. So the risk management framework two O is out. Everything DHS has switched to the way it is working. Everyone's working from a risk based model now. It used to be a compliance based model. Mm -hmm. So now it's risk based. So perhaps Which is much better because you yeah, can check boxes, but that doesn't mean you're doesn't safe. Doesn't mean you're safe, yeah, right? right? And so and so the the this bolt example, it's kind of a good example. Um, even the material in the bolt, is it the right percentage of tungsten versus steel or whatever, stuff like that. Right, it could right. be that's a supply chain problem, perhaps, yep. if they got fake metal or something, you know, whatever, I don't know. But, or it um, can be brittle the, at different temperatures. Yeah, and, but the right. question is still valuable. So what's the risk? Remember, risk is um, uh, freq uh, frequency and then the uh, outcome, right? How, so is it likelihood? And then if it, if it were to occur, how, how uh, catastrophic could it be, right? So there's always that balance. and the uh, the bolt example could be some more of a structural risk and not any kind of someone knowing about it matters or not, right? right. To me, the bolts on an aircraft are important. Let me ask you this. Sure. I mean, you guys have done a lot of contracts, and this is just me, the newbie, saying this is what I think is going to happen. When the government comes to the contracting office and says, okay, you guys are all responsible for labeling CUI now and identifying that to all your, your vendors, right? right. The, what's the easiest thing to do? 
Well, it's all spelled. That's one area they've spelled it out well. It tells you how to label the documents, mm -hmm. how to cover them. Tell me what he's identifying. What's covered? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the contracting officer could just say oh, everything. Well, and they could. But, <laughs> and which, is, which is, I mean, it really, really won't, it really won't it's, matter. It's like, your tolerance it, for is the, yeah. part of it is your tolerance for risk. It's true, right? Yeah. It's going to be your tolerance for risk. What do you think? Now, most companies, the FSO is going to say all of it. Sure, because they're a security officer, right? Yeah, they're, there's they're, no tolerance. There's no tolerance. There's right. no tolerance because yeah. it's their it's their it's their that's on the line, sure. right. and they're going right. to say that. Now, maybe the contracting officer says, "Wait, yeah, cut, cut me some slack here. We're trying to get this contract done." So this is all the this is the this is where the, the mushiness is, is it's happening. Be interesting and let me throw see. one at you because I know we're going to run down. Okay. TAA. Okay, you're going to throw because this is throwing me off. Okay. you know the trade adjust adjustment assistance. Oh yeah, now, and that's because you remember that if you had a contract with the government over a certain size, you could not bring in materials that were made in, say, for example, China. Yeah, mm -hmm. but guess what? In all of this NISTA, there's nothing about it doesn't that. Doesn't mention it. There's nothing about that. So does that mean? In, in my company, you know, in my company where I'm standing out routers and switches all over my business, whatever, it's okay for me to put Sonic stuff made. Wall? Son, but yeah. these are, those are different clauses in the FAR, though. So yeah, that so stuff's in the FAR. It's in the FAR, but it's not in the NIST. No, because NIST is just the, the framework. Uh, frame, so. the frame, just the Standard, framework. Yeah. But so you've got to be careful with the whole contract. Is, the whole the thing. Yeah, all yeah, the yeah. clauses together. Sure. Yeah. There's still the FAR. It's not like you have just DFARs. You have the FAR. But if yeah. you go into Always. the NIST part and you're using the NIST 110 controls, which is going to go to 134 mm -hmm. controls. That's a great segue. Let's, let's put up oh, image number four. So you, you're going to go to those controls. It's like, hopefully in there, it's going to say a TAA uh, hardware only. We don't or, know. Or yeah, that's in the far. That's in this the far. Is, I know uh, it's in the far, but my point is it's not in the NIST. Here's our new CMMC. There are 18 domains now. The NIST has only 14 domains. We've added uh, cybersecurity governance, um, uh, situational awareness, mm -hmm. uh, uh, recovery has been taken out, and um, there's one more in there uh, that was well, taken incident out. Incident response. Incident response was already in there. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's four that were either not there before or were taken out of or other ones and made there. their own. Uh, subject. Well, they clarified physical, I noticed in there, which is good because it was very vague yeah. in the uh, previous one. It was vague. Yeah. yeah. But then now they, now they have, uh, they've all, always had personnel security and right. physical security. Yeah. And now they have other ones. Uh, this is more requirements. I'm going to have to dig into this a little bit more, but this just came out two weeks ago. I haven't had time to really. Sure. And it's in draft mode. I mean, the, the important thing about right now is to ask these questions. Now, That's why you're Because if we get these period. questions up, hey, we think this will be vague. How would it be interpreted? Yeah. Or, or whatever. Like, so, How will you, know, you interpret these, it? These are the times to ask. This, to me, there's more um, uh, like a granular control here than most people are used to. So as they start to work their way into just addressing these basic controls, they're going to come up in their maturity, right? And that's what's important. Mm. Can they get to a level where they have that answer about that particular piece of material? And do they have a way to deal with their subcontractors and that management of this material, you know, that's the questions that we'll all have to work on. Here's what I forward. recommend to everybody doing this. Yeah. Uh, first of all, start now, because you, you've got at least a year. So uh, if you start with the stuff. Well, based on what, what year? It's from September to September. Uh, to respond to an, right base right now, but to respond to an RFI, you will have to be NIST level three compliant by April of next year. So April, so you still got several months. Got, this oh, is yeah. not panic attack time. But here's cool. what I recommend if you're gonna do this. Go out there and get yourself a project manager, an IT project manager that knows how to present all this information. And possibly to someone with experience with working with DOD contracts. That would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. and I Mil mean, ex military sure. out there looking for work. Yeah, there's yeah. security clearance. That's they're cool. gonna they'd be the, and the perfect guy. Awesome. And the with, fact with our last minute, yeah. you guys want to say anything about this? Because we're at the end of the show. I'm exhausted. <laughs> and he did all the talking. Well, <laughs> no, I like I like the the direction that we're going. Um, the country it needs this kind of guidance. Yeah, we, need it. we need it regulated because SS, you know, self testing wasn't working. And so let's just get to it. Let's just work. That's all. Let's do it. I agree. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We're going to be back in a couple of weeks, another Cyber Underground. And within a month, we'll do another DFARS for dummies. Hopefully, all the guys can make it. And uh, <laughs> I got my hat. All right. DFARS for dummies. <laughs> all right. Aloha, guys. Thanks for being on the show. Everybody nice. out there, stay safe. Thank you.